The question I've been asked about in the past is why I don't convert my lathe or milling machine into a CNC machine or why I don't just have a CNC machine. And the truth is, I already have a CNC lathe and a CNC milling attachment for the lathe and I've had them for over 3 years by now. However, I just don't feature it all that much here on the channel and unfortunately, the CNC lathe doesn't get as much use as it used to, and not as much use as I would have hoped. So I thought it might be interesting to go over this lathe and explain why I bought it, and why I don't use it all that much anymore. So for those of you who don't know, Sherline are an American brand of high quality mini lathes and mini mills. And I really do mean it when I say quality. Compared to the import lathe that most of you are familiar with on this channel, this thing is really in a class of its own. Just tighter tolerances, everything is nicely ground in and finished a lot better from the factory, and as a result, you don't have to spend hours mucking about trying to get this thing to machine and cut correctly. Out of the box, when it first arrived, this machine could hold really tight tolerances and make some really good parts. And I'm sure it's one reason why a lot of people, including Mr. Clickspring himself, use Sherline equipment. Plus, if you look at other accessories in their catalogue, they have accessories for doing pretty much anything and everything, including clock making. Of course though, it does come for a price, and this machine was not cheap. Now of course there are other high quality mini lays out there on the market. From memory, Tag and Proxon spring to mind, and I don't want to get into comparing them in this video, mostly because I've never used one or even seen one. In this video, I just want to talk about this machine specifically and why I don't use it anymore. And the biggest reason, really, is just because CNC work, for me, is not as fun as manual work, in my opinion. And seeing as most of what I do here in the workshop is hobby work, I'd rather do what I enjoy. There are of course times where having a CNC machine would be better, for example doing complex curves or doing batch parts, and for that reason it does limit me into how I do shape my parts, but for the most part I can get away with using a manual mill 99% of the time, and really what I do here in the workshop is just one-off parts that are pretty much made from sketches, so in my opinion it's a lot easier to do it this way rather than going through the trouble of modelling up everything in SolidWorks or Fusion, doing the CAM and G-code, and then driving to the workshop to machine it up. However, when I initially bought this machine, I was doing limited small-scale production work in acrylic and aluminium, which is why it made sense at the time to buy this machine. Plus, I was in no position at the time to convert a manual lathe to CNC, so this was really the only option. If I was to do this all over again, I would probably just go ahead and buy a manual machine and convert it, and ultimately it would come out a lot cheaper. On a separate note, as far as CNC machines go, this one does have its issues in terms of its design. Most CNC machines that I've used in the past use ball screws or something similar. Ball screws have almost no backlash, which makes them perfect for CNC work. This lathe, however, uses regular metric trapezoidal lead screws, which is very similar to what I have in the mini lathe. As a result, it suffers from a lot of backlash, and on a CNC machine, that is bad news, because with backlash, the cutter will lose position, and as a result, the parts will start coming out different sizes. Now this machine does have anti-backlash nuts, on the Z-axis it actually works really well, but on the cross slide it's really poorly done. It's not installed at the moment, but there is an anti-backlash nut which you install to try and reduce it, and for the most part it didn't solve it all that much. So to get around it, I used the backlash compensation in Mark III, which kind of works, but I do have to be very careful and watch the lathe since it can still wander after a while. 
Now I am aware that Sherline nowadays do sell ball screw kits and ball screw lathes and milling machines. They didn't do that at the time that I purchased this lathe and I'm sure they're really good. But unfortunately, I just can't justify the price that they're asking for a machine that I don't use all that often. The final reason why I don't use this machine as much anymore is because it feels a lot more restrictive to use than the other lathe. I am able to use this as a manual lathe since the stepper motors come with hand wheels. I just have to unplug the steppers from their drive boards because when you move the steppers, they can generate electricity as I spin them. And doing it this way as a manual machine, I am able to make some very decent and quite accurate parts. But the smaller cutting area and the fine pitch lead screw and driving the lead screw from the back just makes this lathe feel a lot more restrictive and a lot more uncomfortable to use than the Sieg. And for the projects that I do in the workshop, the Sieg is just better suited to the size and ultimately I have a lot more fun doing it, which for me is really what matters the most. On a final note, I hope I haven't put anyone off using CNC machines or Sherline products. A lot of people do enjoy using CNC machines and rely on them more than manual machines or use them exclusively. And in fact, there are times where obviously it would be a lot better to have a CNC rather than a manual mill. And I definitely know this to be true because my introduction to this whole field was using a CNC milling machine close to about 10 years ago and I didn't even use a manual lathe or a manual milling machine for about 3 years. So they can definitely be a lot of fun to use. And in the same boat, Sherline products definitely have their place in a workshop and for a lot of people they find them very useful to have. And I'm definitely not saying they are the best mini lathe because I haven't used every mini lathe. All I'm saying is they can be a very accurate and very good out of the box lathe. With all that said, I'm mostly referring to their manual machines. Their CNC machines do leave a lot to be desired, especially for the price that they charge for them. It obviously is somewhat unfortunate because the market for small CNC machines is a lot smaller than it is for CNC mills, so your range is going to be a lot smaller. But between you and me, I do somewhat regret actually buying this. I can't remember the price that I paid, but after exchange rates, import charges and shipping, it was several thousand dollars. And between the backlash issues that I explained before and the fact that I had to redo the CNC control board after the first one blew, I can't really say that I would buy this one again. With all that said, I am starting to do a lot more CNC work than I did in the past, so if any of you are interested in seeing more CNC content, please let me know and I'll make more of an effort to include this lathe and other CNC content. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something new, see you next time.